I used to, oh my gosh, I used to have such a big crush on Usher. That is crazy. I see it. I see it. I really do. I see Usher fine like as fuck. Well. Yes, ma'am. That's, That's my husband. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> okay. Hello, hello. My name is Eddie. And I'm Amari. And we are the two voices of the week. Start Natives. Our, Our culture, culture unfiltered. unfiltered. Discussing the way of this world. And the Knicks. Two voices. Start two voices. Start Queer. Queer. Candid. Candid. Discussing the way of this world. And the next. Discussing the ways of this world. And the next. Discussing the ways of this world. And the next. Discussing the way of this world. Start and before we actually go to do all these things, I want to let you know to do your daily saintly duties by following, subscribing, sharing, liking, and coming. <laughs> oh, sorry. Really? Am I? Still going? Wow. <laughs> Um, okay. That's a true way of how people feel whenever they're seeing that shit. They're just like, I'm like, fuck you. Uh-huh. <laughs> it's okay. Just like it. Okay. Well, today we actually have wine. We do have wine. Not so like Tony is time. not here. Yeah. Tony is not here. She's on vacation. Yeah. She will know. be back. I She's don't know She's also when. a lush. You know. Yeah. But finally we have wine. Not only that, but you know, do not expect for her to always be there. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. You said the magic word. (laughs) You said the magic word. I know. Expect as in expectations. Mm -hmm. As in you thinking something should be when it's not guaranteed to be. Because the thing is, you know, the thing about expectations is that people people often express their disappointment. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm disappointed about this. I'm disappointed Mm -hmm. about this. Well, you know. The disappointment, it's not the person or the thing that disappointed you. It's the expectations you set for it that disappointed you. And it makes me just think about like, I don't know, me as a person who I am, I try to make sure that I do what I say I'm going to do, but I don't try to put too much pressure on myself where I feel like um, I'm forcing myself to do it. Yeah. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And, I, you know, as, as much as I love my friends and family, I love y'all and I, you know, appreciate y'all. But I would never want you to, don't bank all your chips on me, bitch. <laughs> don't bank all your chips on me, girl. Because, um, you know, I, I'm going to try my best to make sure I don't disappoint you, mm-hmm. you know, if it, if it's, if that's that, that, that. But I'm also, you know, um, I'm human and I may make mistakes. I may do things that might disappoint you. And... You know, I'll I'll be accountable where I need to be, and I'll acknowledge, but I will not uh, let my life be altered completely by Your the way you expected something of me, yeah. and it didn't turn out the way you mm-hmm. expected it to, and I vice versa, me as well with all of you. Well, the thing is with the expectations is that most of them, um, majority of them, are very unrealistic. Mm-hmm. And then the other thing is that you set some expectations, but they are not the same same expectations that you have with yourself. So then you are asking for other people to meet some expectations that for some fucking reason, you're not able to meet them. So how does that work? Like, I I don't don't get that. It's like, how? tell me how. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> and then the other part of as well is that you set some expectations that you didn't even co- fucking communicate to mm. me. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So if you didn't communicate those expectations, then how the fuck do I'm going to be expe- meeting those expectations? Bitch, you're going to be very disappointed. It's kind of like, uh, so <laughs> I-, I was... I'm just saying. <laughs> I was talking to a friend <laughs> mm-hmm. and she was basically expressing to me how she feels... Um, like she's going to be alone forever. Mm-mm. And I have a few friends who seem to be uh, in that same mindset wow. because they are not where they think they should be at a certain age. 
And um, I hope she's not mad at me about mentioning it. I mean, I didn't tell who it is, and I don't think anybody knows who it is. But it's um, <laughs> it's like nobody knows who it is. But you know, sometimes people feel certain ways just about you even mentioning stuff. Um, Girl, but I'm not. <laughs> but, tell me about it. But I, but I'm not gonna go too deep into detail. I'm just gonna say that she's not the only friend that I have that feels that way. They feel like, oh, yeah. I'm a certain age. I should have this. I should have this. Mm-hmm. And it's just like it's it's just really just a bunch of expectations that have been imposed upon our lives it's kind of like uh eddie told me about a book called the four agreements mm-hmm. where he was just that i don't know why y'all not reading it well i haven't read it because you haven't brought it over here for me Shut to read up. It yet. but but i was so, not talking about so you, the four agreements i think one of the agreements is uh you know as a society we have kind of decided things yeah. and we've kind of come to a place where we've all mm-hmm. you know if we have not verbally agreed to do it we have kind of consciously agreed to not do these things and do these things mm-hmm. so now we kind of live by those rules and they set up everything as to what age your child should go to work, yep. what age your child should go to school, what mm-hmm. age you should be graduated by, mm-hmm. what age, you know, you can drink, you can smoke, you can do all of these things, you know, anything. At what age you should be moving out what of your parents. What age you should be moving out of your parents, what age you should get a prostate exam. <laughs> At what age you're supposed to be um, getting married, or yeah. what age you're supposed to be having your own house. And the thing is... That everybody has a different path in life and everybody has to just go with the path that is in front of you. Mm -hmm. And that path might be not similar to the path that Omari is following. Right. So we just have to just deal with whatever is giving to us because for some reason they are giving to us because we are able to deal with them yeah and we just have to go through that not only that but we actually talked about choices and our choices determine the path that we take and because of those choices then we have the expectations that we have in our life and I've learned to like stop explaining myself <laughs> I when I don't that. right. <laughs> I like the <laughs> I've learned to stop explaining myself when I feel I don't mm-hmm. have to. Um huh. like even with me and Eddie, you know, their expectations people have for us. Mm-hmm. Um what our podcast should be, should be what should Start Native should be, should do it who we mm-hmm. should be as filmmakers. Uh-huh. One thing I hated hearing when I first told people I wanted to be a filmmaker and I was going to school for mm-hmm. it was, Oh, you're gonna be like Tyler Perry. And, like, I understand that's your, you know, uh, point of reference for Mm -hmm. black filmmaking, even though there are plenty of other black filmmakers who are far more exceptional creators, even if they aren't as successful. Um, But it's just... Who you want me to be is not who I am. That's why that's where I'm coming from when Mm -hmm. I say, don't bet all your chips on me. That don't mean I'm not going to be loyal to you. That don't mean you can't trust me. But it's it's that you should not expect me to be somebody other than who I am. Mm -hmm. And I try to be transparent with people and try to let them know how I feel about things. That's why I know sometimes I can come off as a real negative bitch because somebody will tell me about something and then I instantly have... Or a cold (laughs) ass bitch and I instantly have like... I instantly tell you that I don't like this or this is how I feel about this. And I'm like, I should be able to do that. (laughs) I feel like I should be able to do that. If I don't like something, I want to be able to say that. Yeah. Because I don't feel like I should be beat upside the head because I don't like something. Yeah. And that goes for anybody. So it's like, don't expect me to be this thing or be that thing. And like that's really one of the biggest things. And it's crazy because like even myself, like I had expectations for myself when I first said, oh, I want to go to school for film. I wanted to work for New Line Cinema and I wanted to work with Warner Brothers. Ironically enough, New Line Cinema is now a subsidiary of true. Warner Brothers. Yeah. <laughs> but New Line Cinema is not the New Line Cinema that I knew. That you knew yeah. It's not the New Line Cinema that had mm-hmm. the Friday movies and yeah. the, you know, the... Uh, and it, it's not like you don't not, see that yeah, logo anymore. Same, it's you not know? the same. Yeah. And it just, it has not been the same since Even they spent all that money on the like, Golden like, Compass. Yeah, actually like New li- Cinema. New Line Cinema, no, the thing is, a lot of my favorite movies were made by New Line Cinema. And they do fucked up on that Golden Compass. That Golden Compass, they Mm -hmm. it's so crazy. New Line Cinema became what it was Mm -hmm. because of Freddy Krueger. Yeah. Because the success of Freddy Krueger, it was so big. It was essentially, it was like originally called like the house that Freddy built. 
Yeah. But then it ended up tanking and becoming the subsidiary of Warner Brothers because of the fucking Golden Compass because they spent so much money trying to chase a Chronicles of Narnia and mm-hmm. Harry Potter bag and it did not work out for them and nobody cared about the movie. Nobody liked the movie and they lost a lot of money. Mm-hmm. So now they're under the thumb of Warner Brothers. So New Line Cinema is not what I wanted it. You know, it's not what I would have expected it to be by now. And I just also just going to school, like I learned different things where it's like, oh, I don't want to do this or I don't want to do that. I don't want to be in the industry. I don't like these expectations that I am expected to meet because of me being a filmmaker and especially being a black filmmaker, a gay filmmaker and Mm -hmm. what I'm supposed to make and who I'm supposed to do it. Mm -hmm. And truthfully, it has prevented me from wanting to do certain things, not out of fear, but just out of like detest. Like I don't, I just just kind of, I'm just, I don't, I'm not Mm -hmm. impressed to do it. Like, I don't yeah. care to do it. Even though I still love to create, I still love to write, I love to read. But, but it's just some... my, I'm altering my expectations for what I want to yeah, do and you, where I want to be. Mm-hmm. And not only that, but at the same time, it's like, because you have gotten to know yourself and seen what you want and everything and seen what are your expectations and what are your boundaries and how you see yourself in life and everything to the point where it's like, you kind of sh- shoozy. You mm-hmm. are kind of picky. Yeah. I into am. what you want to invest your time into. Yep. Because you really have to be like that. You have to be picky. You have to actually be careful on what you want to put your energy into because you want to make sure that the energy that you're putting into is actually that something that gives you mm-hmm. comfort or mm-hmm. it gives you something in life you know like it makes you feel good Mm -hmm. because the thing is like you don't want to waste your time in doing something put so much time into something that i don't care about yeah it's like when people just go to work and then they waste your time and doing a job that they really do not like or love and they only do it because they have these expectations then in reality they're making these expectations just because of the construct that they have with society and with their families and whatever is involving in them Mm -hmm. and then it goes to what we were talking last week about choices yeah. that they made the choices and these decisions that they put put themselves in these expectations yeah. that in reality they are not able to meet and, a lot and of- then they are stressed out and they are feeling all this kind of guilt and stuff like that because they put in themselves into this situation and a lot of times people make you feel like because you choose mm-hmm. to not do certain things or work with certain people that then you are missing like up an opportunity yeah. or you're lazy mm-hmm. or you know you're turning down God's blessing let me tell you something if the blessing is for me it is for me sweetie and ain't mm-hmm. no decision I can make that's gonna take that blessing away from me correct it's going gonna, it's gonna to be mine. Mm-hmm. And, like, it makes you think about... I, I met this girl um, when I was working as a server. Mm-hmm. And she was cool. She was sweet or whatever like that. She said she wanted to be a rapper. Interesting. I didn't see it. Mm-hmm. I didn't hear it, you know, <laughs> for her in that field. Mm-hmm. But I was like, you know, I'm going to listen to your music because she said she wanted to do videos. She found out, mm-hmm. like, oh, oh, you're a filmmaker. You did it. Yeah, cool. Let's... Let's work together. At that time, I was a lot more... Um, willing. Yeah, I was a lot more willing to work with people mm-hmm. because I knew that I just wanted to create. Because you needed to. Um, But I heard her music. Mm-hmm. And girl, it was trash. It was trash. I hated it. I hated everything about it. I was like, this is fucking awful. You have no flow. Your, your rhymes suck. You lack so much enthusiasm and I don't feel like you really want this. So I had no interest in working with her. Wow. I had no interest. Like I had no interest because it's like, why would I invest so much of my time into creating a visual as great as it could be? That doesn't have anything. Yeah. For a song that sounds like shit to me. No, I get it. And I wouldn't advise anybody else to do that. If you don't, my thing is, if you, if somebody want to work with you and Mm -hmm. you don't see like a potential for growth for you and them in working with this thing, Mm -hmm. then what's the point? What's the point? What's the point? What's the point? I was like, girl, I'd rather be your ghostwriter, bitch. I write some rhymes for you if you want that. But I ain't about to direct no video for this whack ass music. (laughs) Whack ass music. You and that just me. is what it is. Yeah, you know I mean, the thing is, I, I, I don't, don't I don't mind a person. The thing is, I would rather somebody give it to me raw and be like, "Bitch, this is whack," than to be like, "Oh yeah, I love it." Oh, and then when they gotta go and tell somebody, "Oh yeah, my homegirl, she rap or whatever," and then the person looking like, "Bitch, I know she this do. ain't what you talking about." Yeah, 
And now you got to sit here and act like, oh, well, you know, she's a nice girl. No, the, the music is whack. Mm -hmm. There's room for improvement, and that's okay. And the thing is, I don't want to be doing that with myself. Like, I don't want to be defending you and be like, oh, yeah, you look good, and blah, blah, blah. Right. And be like, oh, no, no, no. The Bitch, expectation is that I'm supposed mm -hmm. to say nice things because that's for nice, you know, you're supposed that to say nice things. You're supposed to be nice. Just No, sweetie, anybody can yeah. be nice. I'd rather mm -hmm. be a kind person. I think the kindness in me is telling you that I don't that think you your music and is you great shouldn't to do me, that. Mm -hmm. And I don't want to work on this. Mm -hmm. Anybody can be nice. Mm -hmm. Niceness isn't, a, niceness is a task, it honestly. Is. It is. Niceness it is. is a task. Anybody mm -hmm. can be nice. And it's an easy task. Fake nice, mm -hmm. you know. But kindness is a whole different type of thing. So, yeah, I did. I had to let her know, you know, I don't I don't think we this gonna work out. Not with this. Mm -mm. And I don't I don't feel nothing about it. I slept well mm -hmm. that night. Because I don't think I was cutting her down. I wasn't like <laughs> I it's know. just I'm just letting you know, like I don't I don't feel the music, so I can't work on a music video for mm -hmm. you with this. It's like um and the thing is we not like not see, that's an instance that didn't, back then you were able to do that. Nowadays we don't. Mm-hmm. Because it's like one of our friends asked for us to do a video and we had to say no because yeah. it's, yes, we are filmmakers. Yes, we know about camera and we know about things. But I hate doing but weddings. We, we don't do those type of videos. We don't do weddings. We don't do music videos. Like even a friend, another friend asked me, hey, uh, you, you're a filmmaker, right? I'm like, yeah. He's like, oh, I'm looking for somebody to do um a music video. I'm like, oh, thank you for thinking of me. But no, that's something that I nope. don't. And the thing is, other people might see like, Eddie, really, you're losing that opportunity. It's not that I'm losing that opportunity. It's that I'm being picky on what I want to invest in. Like, I'm music being particular. Video. Yeah. Like, you know, in particular. Yeah. I'm being very particular mm -hmm. about how I want, what I want to do. Yeah. Like, I don't mind doing, I like music videos because I think music videos are the place where you can really be creative and True. have fun. But. I have to I be, will, the I got to feel the music. True. I care too much about music to not. Well, not only that, want but the music if you to be care, something good. Yeah, like if you care about the music, then you are able to create something that is powerful, something that is very creative yeah. and everything because it um the music helps the flow of creativity. Mhm. Mm so that I kind of get it. And to me, yeah, I might be able to be okay with me doing music videos. But at the same time it's like I'm picking and then at the same time, it's like, yeah, I know you. We know our friends and everything, but the money actually talks too. <sighs> you know, it's funny because people <laughs> think being critical of like the thing is, I don't mind any artist. Mm -hmm. Artists get hear that. I don't mind any artists artist. being critical mira, mira, of me. Artists, you see that? Yeah, artists. Like, I don't mind any artist or any creator being critical of me as mm -hmm. an artist and as a creator. Mm -hmm. I'm always welcome to feedback. Yeah. What I don't like, <laughs> because it's I'm not going to, I'm not going to bring, I'm not going to brand you as like a hater just because you are critical of my art mm -hmm. and you think that I could do better. Sure. That's why like we have a friend, he's said a couple of things about, you know, this mm -hmm. and he said, oh, this should be like this or this could be like this. Mm -hmm. And I just take it. I'm like, okay. Cool. Mm -hmm. Like I understand because you are a creator and you mm -hmm. have an eye, and mm -hmm. I respect your artistic opinion. Artistic opinion. You see, but you see that somebody artistic who is not opinion. a creator <laughs> and who is not an artist, I don't, I I don't care to hear opinions that I did not ask for. True, because the thing is, if you are not an artist or you are not somebody that is creative, then you are giving me advices that you really do not know about. Because you truthfully, you're not trying to make me better. You're just trying yeah. to make me like something that you've seen. Exactly. There's a difference. And not only it, that, that's a difference. And then the other thing is that you are putting your opinion. You're, you're, you're talking about something that in reality you do not know about. You it's like, oh, I think y'all should talk it. about yeah. about science and the planets. And stuff. Well, that's not what we do. Yeah. We don't talk about, we, that's not, this is not the solar well, I can talk to you about astrology <laughs> if I really feel like <laughs> right. it. You know, I can talk about the zodiacs and things like that. But this is but not a no. uh, NASA dashboard. Like, yeah. not, that's no. not what this is. We're not reading the stars. And if that's what you're looking for, you need to go mm -hmm. somewhere else. True. That's not what's mm -hmm. here. So it's like, that's the thing. Like, I would never brand you a hater because you have an mm -hmm. opinion. But there's certain opinions that I just don't, I didn't seek that. And you're understanding this, right? Because this is our expectations. Like, <laughs> it's, 
truthfully, my expectations have gone. My expectations for a lot of people and a lot of mm -hmm. things have died because um, because people disappoint you. People disappoint you, and also mm -hmm. I think as humans we got to understand. I think that's why sometimes I'm able to receive certain types of news about people mm -hmm. differently. Like even like that boy. You know, I'm not gonna say what it is, but the boy from the thing. It's like I'm not surprised um, because it's like um, I don't. Yeah. It's like I'm not. I don't. It's sad to say it, I don't put nothing past no. It's the wine. Don't blame the wine. I don't. Put, I don't put nothing past nobody. Like the thing is, it's not that I'm saying I don't trust people or that I'm like misanthropic, mm -hmm. but I just anything is possible. Yeah. Any person could be any kind of way. People show you a certain side of themselves and that's what you get. Mm -hmm. But that doesn't mean that that's all who they are. Yeah. And I'm not, I don't expect you to be this perfect thing in my head. Mm -hmm. And that, that happened a long time ago. Like I stopped having those kind of expectations for people because I just realized that that's not, that's not real. Because the thing is, when you put expectations, you, you're kind of fucking fucking yourself you really are because you you you're setting certain expectations that when people do not meet them you're gonna be angry and you're gonna be pissed and you're gonna be irritated and then you're gonna have this stupid feelings that you really are wasting your time and energy when you shouldn't do that yeah didn't i tell you that energy is currency energy is currency i don't know i i think i have talked about many things that are similar in in and I have given like different ex uh, examples for you to to kind of understand and progress and see more and and be able to be somebody that is able to understand yourself. Mm -hmm. And so in that way, you are not disappointing yourself because expectations, that's what it does. Mm -hmm. Expectations, majority of them disappoint. And then you're going to feel some type of way. Blind expectations mm -hmm. at that. And so it's like you have to reassess yourself and understand yourself. And understand that it's like, if I say this, if I set this expectation, am I able to meet them? Mm -hmm. And if I'm able to meet them, then maybe I might be able to somebody be able to meet them. But if I cannot meet those expectations, then I should not be setting those expectations to other people. That's why it's like every day, like I really can't wait until like the day that the celebrity is dead. Mm -hmm. Like the idea of a celebrity and like that perfect kind of like PR, Life, you know, yeah. is just because the thing is, it's like, celebrities are regular people. Mm -hmm. They just so happen to do something that is on a major platform. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And sometimes it just blows my mind where people are just like going in and so mad about this person saying this, like the J.K. Rowling thing. Mm. You think because this woman wrote stories that you love, that she is like above being a piece of shit, if that's how you feel about what she said. And I have my own opinion about what she said. I, you know, I, I think she's trying to have a conversation that people are not ready for. Sure. Because it is not forwarding, it is not pushing forward the the progress that we need mm -hmm. for trans rights and trans people in mm -hmm. the world. So I understand why people are pissed and pissed. irritated. I understand that yeah. because what she's trying to talk about and what she's trying to say, there is no, right now is not the fucking time. But when is the time? Exactly. I guess once we reach a certain point, but... When I don't think we're going to reach that point, point anytime soon. Oh. Um, but even with her, it's like, yeah, she may have wrote Harry Potter, but that don't mean that bitch perfect. That don't mean she the sweetest bitch. It don't mean she make you cookies. And even if she do, that don't mean the cookie's good. It might be. <laughs> <laughs> they might be, but they might be gross. She might have put too much baking mm -hmm. soda or something in them. I don't like Wait, you. is it baking powder or baking soda? I don't know. I don't like you. You know why? <laughs> because it's like my tattoo is Harry Potter. <laughs> Yeah, right you're, there. You're covered in here. Harry Potter the hat. right here. The hat is, but just because I love Harry Potter and I feel a, like I have a really good deep connection with Harry Potter, I don't, I don't ruin my my childhood. I don't ruin my my love to Harry Potter because of her. Yeah. Um, I know how to separate the artist from the work. Most of people are not ready to do that yet. Mm -hmm. So I do understand that part. 
The other thing is, um, I'm an artist, and I understand that we set certain expectations for ourselves mm -hmm. that, you know, we're going to disappoint people. So that's that's really what she's doing. We set an expectation for her because she wrote this type of books, and then now she's disappointing us. So, you know. But yeah, it's you know that's it's whatever. Just, she but, just needs to take her you know, little you know her natural mm -hmm. pussy and go on about her business yeah. and just stop talking. Like because I get, everybody's going to be pissed at her. She's yeah. there's really no win in the no, conversation that she's trying to have. There's never going to yeah. But but just because I do this doesn't mean that I support her for what she's talking. Oh shit, about. that shirt is Harry Potter too, ain't it? Yeah, the shirt is Harry Potter. <laughs> this bitch is covered in Harry Potter swag. <laughs> yeah, today yeah. I am. Okay. Well, it's okay. But, you know, it's, it is what it is, really. And I have my feelings toward the situation and oh well. But, you know, my love to Harry Potter is still, still staying. That's why I say I want like the deconstruction in like this mm -hmm. elimination of the celebrity because yeah. now you are forced. There are too many people who love Harry Potter. Harry Potter is like the Star Wars mm -hmm. of our generation, Pretty especially much. like for millennials. Mm -hmm. So there's no way that people are going to give up Harry Potter because it's too, it's embedded. It's embedded. It's part of the so DNA. So now the we have this construct. opportunity to separate the artist from the art. And I wish that we could do that more often because I think sometimes we care too fucking much about what celebrities have to say yeah. outside of their work. Mm -hmm. But what can we say? Be careful mm. with your expectations. Be careful with your expectations. And I'm Omari. And I'm Eddie. And now you can go ahead and do all that shit. I and we are the two voices of the week. Start natives. Our culture. Unfiltered. unfiltered. Discussing, Discussing the way of this world and, and the, the next. next. And do not forget to do your daily, saintly duties by following, subscribing, sharing, liking, and commenting. And if you are listening to our podcast episodes, then do not forget to leave a five-star rating and a wonderful review on Apple Podcasts. So, we'll see you next week with another different and authentic and incredible video. Maybe, I don't know, whatever it is. Okay. Whatever, don't look, don't set your expectations too high, bitch. Yeah, and not too low. <laughs> All See right, ya. Bye. bye.